We're in studio with New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap because no one charged the worst-selling ones. John, good morning to you. Good morning. And Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning. In the House of Delegates 99th, there are three candidates in the Republican primary. One of those three is actually in studio with us right now, Daphne Andrews. Daphne, good morning. Good morning. Hello. Great to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, it's uh, nice to get you in studio. We've had you on the phone before. I know you've got a very busy work schedule and such. What is it that you do? Well, currently for the past 20 years, I've been working in the medical world in sales in the past several, probably 10, really in a, a community in Fairfax, mm -hmm. where I was the director of a big rehab. I managed 81 beds, and that was during the period through COVID. So I was on the front lines Oof. of COVID. Yeah, it mm -hmm. was very... Very challenging, changed every day. I ended up having COVID twice, but um, it's a world I love. I love seniors. I enjoy providing that solution for them. And in that world, it's a fast moving train where I'm responsible for budgets, hiring, training, all those aspects of a business that's something I'm familiar with. I'm currently working in a home health um, sort of position and that's because I needed the flexibility of being able to run this campaign mm -hmm. so I thank my good friend Jennifer who brought me on board her team to help bring her business to the next level and that's what I've been doing for the past six months or so okay very good yeah. where did you grow up I grew up in Loudoun County my parents uh, bought their first home in Sterling back in 1972 come a little closer to your oh. microphone by the way. oh sorry that's right back in 1972 I grew up in Loudoun County back when Loudoun County was nothing but farmlands and a couple of high schools. And my husband and I, we decided to you know, move out to West Virginia back in 2006 because it reminded me of old Loudoun County. It was small, it was beautiful. It wasn't uh, overtaken by all the, the landscape of homes. Um, so that's why we are out here. We raised our five children through Jefferson County schools. Uh, four of them went through Shepherd. And one of the promises I made them is helping find jobs for this area. You know, all of them are having to work outside of our state, and including myself, I'd like to work here too. And that, of course, is one of your main items in your campaign. What are some of the other issues that you regard as challenges that need to be met and solved in the state? That's a great question, because when I decided to run, I was on the board of Gateway Republican Women. We decided to have a forum after the 2023 legislature legislature mm -hmm. because a lot of the ladies were upset they're upset on two things one the form energy that was passed and the other one was the the hardy amendment so we asked all of them to come and join us for a forum so we can ask questions and it was during that forum where like a i don't know if it was a light bulb or god was speaking to me and i decided that it was time to run based on the answers that were given and the big one, of course, is Form Energy. It's a, you know, it's a new company. I encourage people to look into who they are. They've never had a plant anywhere, but now they're building here in West Virginia and Warrington. The other one was the Hardy Amendment and the way the legislators were answering that question was... Go ahead and fill out for people what the Hardy Amendment means. Okay, so the Hardy Amendment, as you know, Roe v. Wade was overturned and the Hardy Amendment was... Um, you know, passed in 2023, it's the exceptions law. It gives women the exception in the case of rape or incest to abort their baby. And, and uh, health of mother. And health of mother, correct. And coming from the medical world, I can tell you, if you are in the hospital and you're in, in, in having a crisis and the doctor has to make a decision, they're going to do what's right for you or the baby. So I, I kind of don't really look at that as an abortion if you're in that crisis moment or in the emergency room. The doctor took an oath. They're going to do life-saving measures for either one. But the other two, of course, is about rape and incest. And um, oh, I, so that was a big... So you're me. talking form energy and the Hardy Amendment with yes. which you got involved. Got it. That's why I got involved. Yeah, the way the guys were answering it was kind of mind-blowing. What, what do you mean by that, the guys? Well, if you watch the video, it's still out there, the Gateway Forum. Um, they were saying things like, well, this is for, for the, the mom to have a choice to abort their baby. Well, the baby didn't commit the crime. Somebody else did. Why aren't there tougher laws on these people that are doing you know, the rape and the incest. Maybe that's where we need to begin. 
start there. Let's have tougher laws. Maybe that'll discourage people from doing the wrong thing. Um, there's also alternatives. We don't have to abort children on every instance. A good friend of mine, when I was 14, she was raped by her brother's best friend. She ended up pregnant. She had the baby. To this day, this da her daughter you know, still lives with her, but um, she has a wonderful life, and this guy in is still in jail. Every penny he earns goes to her. I mean, there's choices out there. The other thing uh, that struck me through that whole you know, dialogue of the Hardy Amendment is when Patricia Rucker spoke. She said, I will share with all you ladies that we felt as female senators we were not listened. No one was listening to us because not one of us passed that bill. Not one of us voted for it. They, she felt as though the men weren't listening. And um, this is a woman, really a woman's issue, in my opinion. Um, so therefore, if, you know, at that moment, you know, I'm Catholic. I believe that life begins at the moment of conception until our natural death. Um, so I hope to work with others to, you know, bring that back up and let's talk about it. We need tougher, in my opinion, we just need tougher laws, really, when it comes to rape and incest. Mr. Gilstrap. It's, there's a very different spin than you usually hear when, when you hear that this is a woman's issue and that, that men should, should have less of a voice in the abortion issue. It's not usually a pro-life stance. It's usually the pro-choice stance. Mm -hmm. So, it just, that's a, so in, the, in an article in the um, journal in February of, of this year, you refer to one of the reasons you're getting involved is to go against the good old boy network. That's the quote. Mm -hmm. And there's really not a lot of expounding on what the good old boy network is. Is this part of it? And what there more is, is there? Part of it. There is more to it. Um, I mean, if you look at my opponent's uh, kickoff meeting and you see all the guys that sponsored his kickoff, I mean, just look it up. That's the good old boy network, in my opinion. Um, is that inherently feel, bad? Well, I, I mean, when I've been knocking on a lot of doors, hundreds of doors, and when you hear uh, voter after voter feeling as if they're not being listened, no one's listening to them. They feel like their votes don't, you know, their voices don't matter. That's what they're saying. And, and what are the issues? Well, the big one is solar. Um, I have walked every door in Crosswinds, which is right next to my church, St. James Catholic Church. Every Sunday when I go to church, it always takes a breath out of me when I see those panels sitting there. But listening to those voters, every time I leave, I have to sit in my car just to catch my breath. Um, a De lot of them, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Daphne, but isn't that more of a county commission issue? Well, is it? I mean, my the incumbent has introduced bills in 2022 and 2023. I have one of them with me right now where he was either the sponsor or co-sponsor to do away with local zoning, which would give but the you, ability. But you have local zoning right now, and we there's do. still a solar problem. So that, And this is before the legislature has passed a law trying to get rid of zoning. So that, to me, sounds like it's more of a county commission issue. I'd love to come back to be in depth with you about this whole solar. I've done a lot of digging. There's mm -hmm. more to the story than, than what, just that it's a county thing. Um, but you're correct. I mean, yeah, our county officials are part of this as well. Did you consider running for county commission? No. Why not? Um, there are great people that are already running for those seats. I don't know. It, Like I said, going back to that Gateway Republican Forum, just based on my opponent's answers was enough for me to know that I have to run against him. So if you were to win the seat for the House of Delegates, what legislation would you like to enact regarding solar? Well, for one, we're gonna, I would like to help stop some of this green energy projects. Uh, one, in my opinion, if I hate to say use Wayne's name, if he wins, I guarantee you he's going to bring these, these same uh, bills to the floor. If they pass... Which bills? That like HB 2459. I mean, I could read the big meat of the... I'll just give us the general summary. I don't... We can't... You know, we won't I won't read the whole the, bill, oh, but yeah. the very last sentence... What does the bill the, address? Uh, to do away with the local... Oh, I need my glasses. Sorry. It's okay. I do too. <laughs> I'm getting old. I'm already um, there. So it exempts the wholesale generators are permitted use in any zoning district. Mm-hmm. And, and right now in Jefferson County, there is zoning that restricts solar well, farms to certain areas of the county well you have to go through all the different levels of getting you know the permits and like you have to go through the business people you have to go through all these different channels in order to have the solar panels so i know it was passed through these different entities if i own a farm 
Yeah. And my family's had that farm in Jefferson County sometimes for 200 years, mm -hmm. right? And I don't want to farm it anymore or I'm older and dying and my kids don't want to farm it, but they're going to inherit the farm. Don't they have the right to do whatever they want with their land? Isn't that part of personal property rights? I believe in personal property rights, but however, when your personal property rights ends and where mine begins and it's a nuisance to the whole neighborhood, uh, I have a problem with that. Well, but but and how? who defines that. what's a nuisance to who, though? If it's my farm, I can put what I want on my farm, can't I? You can. I mean, if I grow corn and that's offensive to you, am I not allowed to grow corn? Well, no, but is solar agriculture, is it food? It doesn't put food on our table. It's not really a farm. No, it's, but it's my land. It is your land. However, did we approach these farmers and ask, hey, is there other things that we can do? Can we put maybe wineries or breweries? Are there other ideas out there that we can help these farmers? See, I think this is the slippery slope here, and mm -hmm. I'm not being argumentative to you. It's just I, I can see both sides of this argument. And you coming from... Um, uh, Loudoun County and me coming from Fairfax County, we've witnessed we did. The, this slope. And that is, <clears throat> we have all of this gorgeous farmland, so let's develop it into multifamily housing. And let's go ahead and turn it into data centers. Mm -hmm. Let's turn it into ugliness, or you know, a lot of people want to come out here because it's a beautiful place to live, and then we're going to go ahead and commute back into Northern Virginia or, or into the district. Now, in terms of the damage to the environment and the stress on the, the local economy, residential construction, it, it seems to me, is far more damaging than somebody who wants to put in a solar farm. Now, do I want to live next to a solar farm? Absolutely not. But NIMBY is, has been a thing forever. I don't want to live next to multifamily uh, housing either mm -hmm. so uh, i think rob's point not to speak for rob but somebody is it really up to the legislature or to a county commission to tell me what i do with my 200 acres of family land well i believe there should be public comment we should be able to it should be out there that this is coming these we should go to these meetings and speak um like i said i've knocked on over 300 doors in that neighborhood alone well, that's the neighborhood that has it next door. Yeah. Well, okay. You should see their backyard. This poor lady, when the sun is shining, she can't walk through her kitchen. All right. I, uh, it's awful. So, and uh, not only that, it's, uh, it's hurting their, their homes. I mean, if they want to sell their home, they've lost a lot of value. Sure. But again, that's that person's personal property, and there was, there was no law restricting them from doing that, right? Not right. That that I'm aware of. Right. Yeah, so can we approach these farmers with other ideas? I think that's what we should be doing. Well, who's to say that that didn't happen, though? Well, maybe that's Daphne's point is to put a law in there that says that he can't do that. Well, but then, but now you're telling me again that before I decide what I want to do with my land, I've got to have Daphne's crew of people come change my mind for me. That I'm, it's my land. If, if I so long as I'm putting the, yes, I don't know something that kills people on the land, whatever. I mean, I'm. It's my land. I can monetize it as I wish if that's what the laws say. You want to change the law about what I can do with my land, now we're going to get into a personal property rights fight. Yeah. And you know what? Solar I don't disagree. Panels, hey, I don't want to live next to a solar yeah. farm either. I don't, I'm, not, solar, I'm not done. You're wrong. And these solar panels. You ever panels, live you know, next to a strip mine? No. Okay. But, uh, but, or a coal mine? But, I I bought, but listen, I bought a house that backed up to 600 feet of woods. And now they you don't. And they changed the zoning and they put 170 houses back there. Sucks for me, mm -hmm. but that's what happened, right? Yeah. Because that farm sold. They got the zoning change from agriculture to development, and they were able to put 160 houses back there. But that's how things go. Yeah. Right? And when we're talking about all these houses, you're right. They're blowing up everywhere. What are we doing for infrastructure? Are we doing more for schools? I don't think I don't know. So, well, the school aid, the 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 taxes that are collected, personal property taxes are are s almost seventy percent of it goes straight to the schools. Mm -hmm. So, when you have more people coming in, then they pay more property taxes, and so that money is already uh, designated to do more for the schools, yeah. in a sense. So, um, hey, I wanted to ask you about the, the what the rape incest and a health of the mother exception sure. is that an automatic disqualifier for candidate supports that that you would you would support them what do you mean like if if, if, if a candidate supports 
an exception for rape, incest, or the health of the mother, would you, could you support that candidate? With great difficulty. Because yeah. that's, that's what uh, Donald Trump, he, he has know. endorsed that. So that's why I was asking that, if that's going to be a problem for you to support. I mean, I'm assuming it's you support It's a great Donald question Trump. because a lot of voters ask, who are you voting for in the general election? I'm like, well, do you want more, four more years of Biden or do you want four years of Trump? I'd rather have four years of Trump. I mean, he was great for our economy. I, my, my stocks look great, and so did my 401. Um, that's very important. Um, and what's happening to him is awful. I don't like what's happening to him, you know, with all this court stuff. Yeah, I'm aware of, of what he has said about, yeah. Okay. I, I just wanted to ask that because it seemed like that's, you know, obviously a very important issue to you. So It is very important, and you're right. It's a great struggle. But, again, you got to look at the two that are on that ticket and, and go with the better. Do you consider yourself— hey, uh, Before you ask that question, we're just about out of time here, oh. uh, wow. Daphne. We had some good give and take today, but this, uh, the final couple minutes are yours here. If you want to uh, talk to our audience and tell them why they should vote for you in the 99th House of Delegates District race. Um, so— why they should vote for me on May 14th, um, as you can see, I get a little, I don't know if you can notice today, but <laughs> I get a little passionate about when I believe in something. It's okay. Um, I've had a lot of bosses telling me, hey, calm down, you got to. You're good, but I'm Bring a it. fighter. I, I, I would fight for the people of West Virginia. I believe in West Virginia first. Believe me, this is the last thing that I ever thought that would be on my bucket list to do, but I'm in it, and I want to represent West Virginia and, and do the right thing. Especially, you know, we didn't get to talk about children and what's happening with our CPS in this state and other layers of things about children. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, and I want to be that person that's on that floor helping these these kids. I, I read all these stories across the state, and it's, it breaks my heart. Um, but uh, other than that, yes, um, I'm vo winning your vote because, again, I like I said, I'm a fighter. Um, I'm a defender of the Constitution. I'm very principled when it comes to you know, legislation coming across. The, those things will be read. They will be decided on. I will not go to Charleston to you know, go to those lobbyist parties or the corporation parties. I'm there to do a job. I am used to working seven days a week, sometimes 12, 14-hour days. I will do that for West Virginia as well. Daphne, how do people find out more about your campaign for the House sure. of Delegates? I am on Facebook for Daphne Andrews for West Virginia. Um, you can find me there. Uh, if I make it through the primary, my website will be up soon. My daughter, who just is finishing up her degree with Shepard, she's creating it. Um, so it should be ready soon. Very nice. Yeah. Hey, you, you made it through. What would you think? Are we still on the air? Yeah. Oh, we are. Oh, what did I say? <laughs> you, you survived the interview. I, what do you think? I survived. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a different avenue for me. I'm not used to I don't know who's out there watching. It makes you nervous. Well, you did well. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you. Daphne Andrews at 901 in a segment brought to you in part by WBU Medicine Berkeley Medical Center, Jefferson Medical Center, leading healthcare here and everywhere. This is Talk Radio, WRNR Martinsburg and TV 10. Back with more, including the extra hour today. We go until 11 o'clock uh, today as well. Coming up next. Sick of career politicians fattening their own wallets? I am too. This is Tom Willis. I'm running for West Virginia State Senate. I'm a U.S. Army Special Forces Green Beret, constitutional conservative, local business owner, and Christian family man. I'm pro-life, pro-gun, and pro-your West Virginia family values. Unlike my opponent, duty day Craig Blair, I will never vote for the chemical castration of gender-confused minors or to give $290 million of your taxpayer dollars to a woke Green New Deal DEI form energy company. Together, we can win. Please vote for me, Tom Willis, on May 14th. Paid for by friends of Tom Willis. Ready to shake up Washington? Listen to Pro Trump 